Hi, my name is Kelly Wagman, and I'm currently a PhD student at the University of Chicago. This paper is called Beyond the Command, Feminist STS Research and Critical Issues for the Design of Social Machines, and it is co-authored with Lisa Parks, who is currently a professor at UCSB. The central focus of the paper is the relation between humans and what we call social machines. As an example, here we have someone saying to a digital assistant, Alexa, tell me the weather. This command sounds simple, but is actually somewhat complex. A human is directing a command at a feminized device. What kind of relation is this? In this paper, we ask, how does power work in human-machine relations? And how should tech designers and builders invested in equity and inclusion conceptualize this relationship as they are crafting new devices? You may have seen headlines like these in the news recently. People are starting to wonder whether yelling at a device, particularly a feminized one, is acceptable. In the paper, we explore how to grapple with this from a design perspective. We approach these questions from a feminist science and technology studies, or STS for short, perspective. While I don't have time to go into the full history of feminist STS work related to these issues that we cover in the paper, I want to talk about a couple of key concepts. The first is the idea of what is called the social. As we explain, all machines are part of the social, a science and technology studies term that broadly refers to what is produced when humans and non-humans interact and develop relationships and become part of the power relations, societal norms, and cultures. In this framework, interacting humans and non-humans are mutually shaping. Humans and non-humans both influence and are influenced by one another. You can think of the social as a web of sorts that includes both humans and non-humans. I like this example on the left because it shows that these are not new concerns. This 1950s General Electric ad figures machines as servants in the home. Like the starting example, the woman pictured here is in essence saying, weather maid, tell me the temperature, to the thermostat that is drawn in the form of a ghost servant. Even in the 1950s, there seems to be an assumed relation of power between the quote user as master and machine as servant. It is important to think of the social as not only the relation between the user and the machine, however. A machine has a life cycle that includes its construction, programming, use, and disposal. In other words, a complex socio-technical system. This is a detailed shot of a work called Anatomy of an AI System by Crawford and Joller. It shows a socio-technical system for the Amazon Echo that includes the act of mining the minerals to build the Echo, the data centers needed to train the AI, and more. So when we think about relations between humans and machines, we need to consider this full web of relations, not only the user-machine relation. From a design perspective, it is critical for people building technology to understand that they are not just building objects, but designing this web of relations. Another important concept in feminist STS is the breaking of the human-machine binary. One example is Donna Haraway's description of a cyborg. Increasingly, systems are assemblages of humans and machines and it is often difficult to disentangle them. Some examples that might include, some examples might include self-driving cars that use human input, chatbots or content moderation done by humans and AI together, and an automated glucose meter used to control diabetes. With this understanding of machines as a set of relations embedded in a socio-technical system that comes from STS, Feminist STS, in particular, argues for confronting and addressing structural power differentials and dominant ideologies in the relations between humans and machines. Another way of saying this is that these webs of relations come with all sorts of power imbalances and dominant assumptions about human-machine, how human-machine relationships should function. Feminist STS has interrogated these relations and advocated for crafting more equitable power relations. Why is having power imbalances with machines a problem in the first place? While this is a complex question, one way to look at it is to consider the social as mutually shaping, as described earlier. 
In other words, if we are shaped by the relations that exist around us, it is important that these are equitable relations. Another way of looking at it is to consider the ways in which the human-machine binary is breaking down. If you say that it's okay to dominate machines but not people, what happens when you're dealing with a mixture of the two? This becomes murky, and feminist STS scholars argue for equitable power relations among all social actors. Before getting to how designers should conceptualize social machines, let's look at how people working in robotics think about them today. After reviewing a broad selection of human-robot interaction, or HRI, literature, we found these four categories were the most prominent. Tools, human companions, animals or creatures, and slaves. Each of these is somewhat problematic, though, if analyzed from a feminist STS perspective. Tools are what anthropologist and HCI scholar Lucy Suchman calls subject objects. For example, a car can be a tool, but lots of people also name and talk to their cars, making them both subjects and objects at once. In terms of humanoid machines, Suchman also outlines the problem of dealing with, quote, ideal organisms that reproduce normative ideals of beauty and how a human or a machine should look. Animals and creatures also face the ideal organism problem. In addition, our history of domination over animals is complex and not one that we want to replicate with machines. Finally, we consider devices like the Amazon Alexa a slave. In other words, a tool that will do anything you say but sounds like a person. As I discussed earlier, we argue that allowing this kind of relation of domination is not acceptable. With this background, let's turn to our suggestions for conceptualizing what we call social machines. Colloquially, social machines are often called robots. Part of why we suggest using the term social machine is because the history of the word robot comes with a lot of baggage and dominant assumptions. In particular, it was first used to refer to enslaved humans and mechanized labor done by humans. This means it has historically been used to talk about master-slave power relations where both sides were humans. We find this problematic and suggest using the term social machine instead. Now I'll discuss our definition of a social machine. We suggest that technology designers use the word social machine in order to craft and conceptualize more equitable and inclusive social devices. Our model considers social machines as having agency, engaging in equitable relations with humans, and being other to humans and animals. This means that there is a focus on removing relations of domination between machines and other social actors, acknowledging that the machine has the ability to act independently and affect change, and thinking about the social machine as a different conceptual category than humans or animals, one that needs its own norms and practices. We propose two concrete design challenges to the HCI community. The first is non-anthropomorphic figuration. It is a way to push back against the problem of crafting ideal organisms. This goes beyond avoiding the construction of humanoid social machines. Since humans tend to anthropomorphize everything, even their own cars, this is an open research question on how to actually do this. One example from artist Kelly Dobson is a blender that responds to human voice commands but the human must growl in the sound of the blender instead of the blender understanding human language. Second, the idea of mutuality gets at how to create an equal power relationship between humans and machines. This is a hard problem because humans build machines, so how can we create a mutual relationship? The images are from an art piece by Lauren Lee McCarthy where she acts out being a digital assistant in someone's home for the week. By doing this, she shows how awkward and uncertain this relationship really is and how far we are from having norms around the interaction. Our social machine model is radical because it challenges existing dominant assumptions about machines and robots, such as that humans should dominate machines. But it goes beyond critique to help designers understand how they might actually build more just and equitable devices. By untangling some of the assumptions about how machines should work, we hope to provide freedom for designers to think in novel directions. 
We hope that people in the HCI community take up our design challenges because experimentation is critical for understanding how to operationalize this theory and craft more equitable and just socio-technical futures.